Okay, as I said, these are all possible 16 binary operators in propositional logic for two inputs. Um, so what if we would like to generalize the number of input variables, input propositions? So not binary operators, but let's say functions that accept three inputs, that accept five inputs, that accept 10 inputs, then there would be huge truth tables to list all possible um, functions, such functions. Therefore, th this is not a viable way. And in order to be able to generalize this, because we like generalizing things in mathematics, we are going to use what we call normal forms. And uh, uh, the approach we are going to use is as follows. Now, consider the binary operators. Now, we are going to talk about this, first of all, through binary operations, but we are going to generalize it um, to, to more inputs later on. Consider the binary operators that are true only for exactly one input combination. So obviously, since there are four input combinations, there are four such terms, four such operators. Uh, the one that is true only for the input combination false-false is F1. The one that is true only for the input combination false-true is F2. And the one that is true only for P true, sorry, well, I'm, I'm not using P and Q here. Let me backtrack a little bit. I'm using P2 and P1, okay? so. P2 is written here because that is going to be, let's say, uh, the, the, the high bit, okay? So this represents input combination zero because this is zero, zero, and this is zero, one. So it represents the input combination one, and this is one, zero, so that is two, and this is one, one, and that represents three. Now, here, F4 is the one, um, is, is the binary operator that is true only when input combination two, meaning true false here, is applied. And finally, we have F8 as the binary operator, which is true only when both inputs are true. Now, obviously, the indices of these operators, F1, F2, F4, and F8, are not random. You see, these are powers of two. And it's not a coincidence because that is the way we chose to name our binary operators. This is 0, 0, 0, 1. This is 0, 0, 1, 0. And this is 0, 1, 0, 0. This is 1, 0, 0, 0. Based on our definition, it's only natural that we will have the indices as powers of two. Now, why did we choose these? Now we call these mean terms. And the thing about mean terms is we can combine them using ORs to come up with any operator we like, right? Accepting two inputs, you can build any function you want using the mean terms. Because uh, let me give you a function. Let's say true, false, false, true. Let's say we would like to represent this um, as, um, let's say, uh, generalizable as possible, right? So you see, I'm going to take, since this is true, I'm going to take this one, this mean term. And since this is true, I'm going to take this one. So that was F1 and that was F8. And this can be represented as F1 or F8. Because if you apply this input due to F1, the outcome will be true, whatever F8 is. In fact, that is false in this case uh, here. And if, if these two are applied, these are going to be false as expected here. And if this input combination is applied, then not F1, but F8 is going to be true, making this again true. 
So this is the approach. And in fact, we actually rename the functions here, mean terms, uh, M0 through M3. So we are using a, a new way to name the mean terms, M with a subscript of um, value, input combination value, this is zero, one, two, three, that makes the corresponding mean term true, okay? So M0 is the mean term that is true only when the input combination zero is applied. M1 is the mean term that is true only when the input combination one is applied and so on. Obviously M3, find one, is the mean term that is true only when the input combination three is applied. All the mean terms are false except at those specific input combinations. Okay, and these terms we are called uh, are called mean terms, and the subscripts I have just explained. Uh, but you see, one important point here is each mean term can be expressed using and and not. That's the only two things we need: and and not. M0 is not P2 and not P1. M1 is not P2 and P1. M2 is P2 and not P1. And finally, M3 is P2 and P1. Okay, so the only operations I see here are negations and ends. And using mean terms to build other functions, I'm using conjunction, right? That means I can uh, build or express all operators, all binary functions using the mean terms along with ors, right? For instance, F3 is M0 or M1, F6 is M1 or M2, and so on. F15 is M0 or M1 or M2 or M3. And in fact, you see the benefit of naming these functions using the specific subscripts comes in handy. Why is that? Because take F3, since the subscript is three, I know that its output is zero, zero, one, one. Or we can use false and true values. That's the same thing. But this means I need the mean term zero and the mean term one to build F3. So I can directly write which mean terms I need from the subscript, right? Similarly with F6, that is clearly zero, one, one, zero. So I just need mean term one and mean term two. And F15 obviously is one, 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 one. Therefore, I need all the mean terms. And 11 is um, 1, 0, 1, 1. So I need mean term number 0, mean term number 1, and mean term number 3. So you don't really need to put up the table and try to find out which mean terms I need. You can just look at the subscripts and drive them using them.